Hey, I'm Randy Vance, and I've got some sound advice for you. Used boat market has grown exponentially the last two years, and people are getting into boating at a crazy rate. One of the disappointments that they're finding, though, is in the audio system in their boat. Oftentimes, they're kind of archaic with CD players, no USB input or no Bluetooth. That's just kind of yesterday's news. So a lot of guys are wanting to change the head unit and keep the rest of their system in place. Now, sometimes you can get away with that if your speakers are still operating well, but I think you're gonna to wanna to do both. In the meantime, there are good reasons to change just the head unit. As I said, you want Bluetooth, you want USB, you definitely want it to be compact and you've gotta have a screen that's easy to read in the sunlight. The last thing you wanna consider is the footprint, both on the dash and behind the dash. How much space do you have back there? The smaller the boat, the less, and the more likely a big unit in the back is gonna interfere with gear that's already behind the dashboard. That's one of the things that I like about the Kicker KMC3. It goes through a three inch gauge hole. It's very narrow, very small. Now the unit comes with both this chrome bezel and a black bezel. Now the KMC5 also comes with a chrome bezel and a black bezel to give you some installation choices. Let's talk about the features that you wanna look for. Now the KMC3 is ideal for a smaller boat under 20 feet. Oftentimes that boat can be handled just by four nice speakers and the 200 watt output in this KMC3 unit. Now the KMC3 unit has a smaller LCD screen, but it's easy to read in the daylight and it gives you all the information that you need, including telling you how to hook up your Bluetooth device and helping you toggle between Bluetooth and USB and radio. The KMC3 is on the low end at about $220. Now the KMC5 has both a color screen, Bluetooth, USB, and it can handle two different zones. That means you can operate tower speakers and you can operate the boat speakers separately or a cabin speaker or the bow speakers separately from the rest of the boat. It's also got a video input so that you can also use it as a backup camera or as a rear view mirror to watch your riders. That unit's $599. In between, there is the KMC4 that's $379. And what it lacks that the KMC5 has is NEMA compatibility. What that means is the KMC5 can be operated through most navigation MFDs. That means you can tuck this system away any place on the dash or up in the electronics box and access your music from the dashboard with your MFD. When you go to connect your source unit, the first thing you want to think about is protecting it from voltage. You have to put a fuse in the power line and both the KMC3 and the KMC5 have inline fuses. Circuit breakers protect the circuit on the boat. The fuse protects the device. Here's a couple tips for installing it. When you wire the system, connect it directly to the battery bus under the dash. That way it'll draw its power from the battery and eliminate most interference from other devices. Some installers will go directly to the battery, avoiding all other circuits. I also like to connect my system to an accessory switch so I can shut it off positively at the end of the day. Now, a new source unit is the first step in getting great sound on your boat, but we think you need to look into speakers, and that's what our next segment of Sound Advice is about. I'm Randy Vance.